Hello everybody. Welcome to the AutoGPT arena. I'm Torin, the inventor of AutoGPT. We're thrilled to have you all here and I'm personally very excited to witness the bounds of what's possible with AI be pushed once more by all you brilliant contestants. Craig is going to briefly walk you through getting set up for this unique competition and to showcase the open source tools the AutoGPT team have been working so hard on. Over to you, Craig. Hey, thank you, Torin. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to get started. First thing you need to do is navigate to the AutoGPT GitHub page, which is at github.com slash significant gravitas AutoGPT. You wanna make sure you're logged in and then hit the fork button. This will enter a page where you can enter your repo name, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it as default and click create fork. This is going to take a few moments to create and then you want to click here on the code button and then you can clone your GitHub repo using either HTTPS, SSH or the GitHub CLI. I'm going to use SSH. You then want to open your terminal and then type git clone and paste in the name of the repo you've just cloned. This will now clone it down onto your machine and whilst it's doing this, you need to know that we are supporting Windows subsystem of Linux, uh, Linux and Mac, but it will not work in a PowerShell on Windows. But it's really easy. If you pop over to the tutorial, there's a link there on how to install Windows subsystems for Linux and get started. It takes a few moments to get downloaded, but as soon as it's downloaded, you can change directory into the newly created folder. Then you need to type in dot slash run setup. This is going to try and set up your system. And what it's going to show you here is that you need to create your own access token. But there may be other instructions that pop up on your screen and you need to follow those along to install everything you're going to need for this project. So clicking on this link, it opens up the access token page. What you want to do is go here, generate new classic token, and the scope needs to be set to repo. So then generate the token. You'll see the token you need to copy this. Go back to your terminal. I'm going to open my IDE in this folder, which is VS Code, and then in the GitHub access token folder uh, file, I'm just going to paste in the access token. Okay. So now what you can do is you can type run setup again and you're going to get all green and you're ready to go. Next, you want to create your own agent. So I'm going to do agent uh, create and I'm going to call this one smart agent. Hit enter and there we have it. The agent has been created. And now you can tell everybody that you intend to enter the arena by copying and pasting this command in and hitting enter again. And this creates your entry and a pull request into the main AutoG repo, like so. And you just fill this out with what you're about, what you're gonna be doing, uh, and that will be merged into the Auto repo, AutoGPT repo, and you'll be an official contributor. Next up is how to start this agent. So you do dot slash run agent start, and the name of your agent again. And now this, what this does is it installs all the dependencies you need to start the forge and then starts up the agent server and the benchmark server. And this will allow you to open the UI. Now you note here, it says you need to add your API key to the .m file. So you need to go, if we look at this file in our IDE, so you see your code is here created under your agent name and you got a .m file. And you need to replace this ABC with your OpenAI open API key. 
And so now this is the forge up and running. So if you open the link, oh, that looks a bit. Oh, that's the wrong one. If you open the link, you now have the forge UI. Okay, so now this is the Auto GPT agent UI. Now, when you first open this, you're going to see an option to log in using Gmail or GitHub. I've already logged in, which is why it's not shown for me. So we have three main components of this UI. The first here is what I'm calling the task interface. Then we have the benchmarking interface and we have our settings. Down here, we have a link to the tutorials, uh, the leaderboard, and then Discord and Twitter. So what we're gonna do first is create a new task just to demonstrate how that works. So I'm gonna hit new task, which isn't really needed whilst uh, you're coming out for the first time. So I'm gonna just type in hello. And then I'm gonna click this button, which is to send that command to the agent. And you'll see the hello executes the default logic, which just creates an agent. Uh, a response, standard response. So I can type in more commands like what's up and we get the same response. Now this button here is continuous mode. So if you've asked it to do a big task like write a book for example, um, you don't want to have to be keep pressing this button over and over and over to get the task to step through until it ends. And so you can hit this button and proceed and it will run through all the tasks until it's completed. Now this is the main section here. This is the benchmarking section. So what we see here is the four categories of the hackathon. So you have the general one, uh, which has got the biggest prize. So you get the highest score on this skill tree and you'll do be very close to winning. Uh, then we have just the coding section of the skill tree, the data section of the skill tree, and then the scrape and synthesize section of the skill tree. Now, you'll notice all of them start at write file, because if you can't write a file, you can't pass any of these tests. So I'm gonna take a small test suite here by clicking on read file. And so what's gonna happen is it's gonna try and execute the write file test, and then it's gonna try and do the read file test. So I hit play, or initiate my test suite. And what you can see is that it straight away runs through and passes the write file because the default logic in the forge just passes the write file test. And then it tries to do the read file, but it's still doing the wrong thing, and so now it fails. If you go back to the task UI, you can see actually here is the test suite you just ran and the two different tests within it. So let's do something more complicated here. Let's go do the battleship one. I hit run, and you'll see it passes the first one, then it fails the next one, and it doesn't try and execute the rest because if you failed this far, you're not going to get much further. Now, to submit your scores to the leaderboard, what you need to do is hit this submit to leaderboard score uh, button. You type in the name of your agent. So I'm just going to call it Craig's test. You want to go back to your GitHub page, the fork that you made, and copy and paste that in. Here we go. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste this uh, actually, no, I'm not sure to do it properly. You want to go back to your terminal. You want to type in git rev parse head. And this is going to give you the git hash of, the, of where you're up to. You want to make sure you've committed all your changes because if you've got a good score and then you make a change and it starts performing worse, you're not going to know what changes you've made. So make sure you commit your changes first and then you hit submit. I'm gonna hit cancel because I've already submitted these scores. And then here, you can go over to the leaderboard and see how you've done. I'm winning as I'm the only one here at the moment. Right. So that is all there is to the UI. On this side here, which I haven't mentioned, it shows you how the task is going as it's running. And I'm gonna... Now we've covered how to create an agent, enter the arena, and interact with it on the UI. We're gonna dive into the code a bit now. So what I want to show you is where to find your agent code, 
which is under the auto GPTs folder and then the name of your agent. Inside this, you want to navigate to the forge folder. Now inside the forge, there is the agent.py and this is the main file you're going to be working from. There's also the prompts folder, which has the prompts for your agent in it and the SDK, which includes all the kind of the boilerplate code that goes on in the background. You see there's abilities, there's memory, and there's also routes available for you. So these are the agent protocol fully implemented. And you don't have to ever have to touch this. And the agent itself, which calls the, um, which is called by the roots of the server. Now, you've got the database file, which is gonna be an important one because you're probably gonna to want to subclass this to add in more records to store. And then we have some simple wrappings for the LLM calls. So, how to get started with all this? If we go back to the UI, you'll see there's a button down here, which is the tutorials. You click on this, it's gonna navigate you through to the tutorial screen. And here is a list of tutorials that's gonna walk you through the whole process of setting up the project, which we've just covered, understanding what the components of an agent are, the layout of the forge, how to interact with the agent, and then how to craft. Uh, some intelligent logic using an LLM. Thank you, Craig. I'm looking forward to seeing your gladiators enter the AutoGPT arena and to eventually crowning a victor. If you have any questions, we're having a live Q&A at 1 p.m. Pacific time and we'll be happy to answer them. We're also always around in our Discord server. Thank you all for coming and good luck.